Hey guys, it's Jay, Jay Williams Productions dot com coming at you with a quick tip video. Call it a tutorial for FL Studio 20. Calling this one how to create more headroom in FL Studio 20 when adding to a finished mix. Okay, so that's what we're going to go into. Um, before before I get into that, yeah, let's do this part now before I get into the info that you're here for. Um, first of all, thank you so much for watching and subscribing. Yep, there it is. Watching, liking, and subscribing, and hitting the bell thing. Um, thank you to everyone who's been uh, streaming our album. By the way, our album came out a little while ago last Saturday. Uh, Saturday? Two Saturdays ago. Yeah, two weekends ago it came out. Um, getting some good streams on Spotify, but if you haven't checked it out yet, please check it out. You can go to bit.ly, B-I-T L-Y forward slash Spotify J, J-A-Y. That'll take you right over here to my artist page. Okay, here we are on Spotify artist page. Scroll down a little bit. Album's right there. All right, and then also while you're bopping around online, you can grab some free downloads of a couple of tracks working on the website a little bit go to jwilliamsproductions.com forward slash free downloads right now we've got caught in a trap which is my last single on spotify is available uh, future house 125 is a track that's been blowing up on soundcloud you can download that and then three tiers instrumental you can download that all those on my website so that's actually pretty generous hey two my last two spotify singles uh, plus some fun stuff off of SoundCloud. All right, so let's get back into it. We're here for um, some learning. Yeah, how to create more headroom in FL Studio 20 when adding to a finished mix. Okay, so let's define some terms here. Headroom, you may not necessarily know what I'm talking about when I say that. And what is a finished mix? What am I talking about when I say that? And exactly what problem am I talking about here that I'm solving and giving you some insights on? Okay, let's get into it. So here's what's going on, guys. I've been... This is becoming more and more of an issue for me um, this year, as this year has kind of gone on. Um, I've kind of gotten into this pattern where I'm making a lot of instrumental tracks. Where with me, I want to change this audio. Audio. Uh, here we go. Making some tracks and then kind of living with them as as instrumentals for a while. And maybe thinking it's going to be an instrumental. And then, you know, after I live with the track for a month or, or two months or when I'm working with a collaborator and they have an idea and I think, oh, maybe this person might be great for this track. Um, then I've got to go add their parts in. So what I'm talking about here in, in particular, this track that... I queued up in the background here is what I've been working on for a little while. This is a weird little track that kind of came to me as a migraine headache about a month ago, maybe two months ago now. Um, it's called Friday. feels like a Monday. So here's what I'm talking about with, with Headroom. So I've got everything. Here's my... This is the mix. This is not the master session. This is just the mix. I've got everything routed to my master channel here. Okay. And my last plug-in that I've got is always my fruity DB meter. I just like to keep an eye on my levels. Okay, so without telling you what to do, because this is not really about necessarily a mixing tutorial, I personally on my finished mixes before I bounce them out to be mastered, okay, my finished mix, I want them peaking kind of like this guy's peaking right here, right around that minus six DB is my personal sweet spot. So, and then the difference between here, this minus six, or where it's peaking, and zero, above which it'll cause distortion, right? That's what I'm talking about for headroom, okay? This space right in here is what I'm talking about for headroom. So, what's going on with this particular track is my buddy Jerry Jennings, a new collaborator I'm working with, this is actually, yeah, second track we've got going. Um, he sent me some guitar parts, which I totally dig, and I want to use them for this track. But my issue is, as you'll notice, if you're looking at my dB meter, let's get that dB meter going again. Where did it go? Oh, it's hiding up here. Come on. It's one thing I don't like about FL Studio is the way it bounces stuff around. 
as you bounce around. Okay, so if you'll notice here, I didn't leave myself headroom. Here's the point, I didn't leave space for guitar parts that I'm getting from Jerry, right? So here I've got, I've got some cool guitar stuff going on, but what'll happen is if I wanna try to keep this guitar, and I think I've kind of tinkered with the sound file a little bit, so my point is maybe not being as clear as it will be in a minute. But the short version of the story here, guys, is if I've got a mix that's finished, then to add room for the guitar over here, I've got, got to go back to my previous mix that was balanced just the way I like it, peaking just the way that I like it, and I've got to go like start turning stuff down, right, to make room for the other sounds, okay? Let me run through that again in case you guys are new to mixing. But essentially, when you look at your when you look at your mixing board, guys, all all of these little meters in here are just little mini versions of this. And there's different visuals you can use for this in FL Studio. But all these little meters are mini versions of what you're seeing right here. So for each individual stem, you really don't want them peaking too hot. Actually, the this guy right here is kind of a little bit too hot for me. And by that, I, I mean it's peaking too high. It's going to cause distortion, right? Um, but then as you, the more that you've got on your mixing board this way, really the less room that you have vertically for each one of your stems, because there's going to be a cumulative effect as you add more stuff in. It, think of it this way. If you've got a nice bowl of soup, and then let's say you forgot your croutons, when you add those croutons, guess what's going to happen? Soup is going to spill over the side. Okay, so good. That's a good, as good as, good as an example of any. Okay, so um, let's get to the fix, right? So the way around that is not to go in, and I've you guys probably some of you probably already know this, and there's probably a quicker and easier way to do this. And if there is, please let me know in the comments below. Okay, but this was like something I've been struggling with, especially this year. Just came out with this little workaround. Okay, so instead of going in and Again, we've talked before about how I keep my mixes kind of light. This is a 14, before I get to Jerry's parts, this is a 14 stem mix, right? So if going in, instead of going in and tinkering with all these levels, we can actually do something different in terms of how we're routing things to the master chain. So let's go back over here. We don't need to save those changes. So here's, here's the solution that I came up with. And while that's loading, we can go to the note card and we're going to wait for my old iMac for a second here. There it goes. All right. So here's the solution, guys. What we're going to do, instead of adjusting all those 14 stems, we're going to route all the channels to a new bus. Okay. All of them, instead of right now, they're all going 100% to the master. We're going to send them 100% to the bus and 0% to the master. Right. Then we're going to route the bus to the master we're going to adjust the percentage of the bus and that's going to create our headroom. We've got to dial it back from 100% because there's no room, right? We need to make room for those croutons, for Jerry's guitar croutons, okay? Um, and then we're going to route the croutons, the added channels, <laughs> directly to the master. All right, so here's what I'm talking about, step by step. All right, so same project, slightly different approach. So in the previous, and I probably, this might have helped you understand if I'd shown this on the previous screen, but I'm assuming that you guys understand that typically when you're finishing a project, when you're mixing a project in FL Studio 20, you may bounce it to various buses or sends or whatever, but eventually, typically you're going to have something go, like your kick is going to go right over here to the master. Okay, this is your master right here. And as you click along here, you can see all these little arrows and lines and stuff that's showing you your routing, okay? So, going back to the point, we're going to route everything. Instead of routing all this stuff, we're not going to touch any of the levels, all right? So instead of routing all that stuff to the master, we're going to route all that stuff to this new bus, and I just called it bus for bed, meaning it's the bus for the existing musical bed, okay? So the kick, the clap, the hat, snare, my effects, my 808, my synth stuff in the middle, all this stuff is now going, none of it's going to the, directly to the master, all of it's going over here, all right? So basically, what that tells us, guys, if we look at this, that what is now on rack 20, this is basically the exact 
exactly the signal that was going to my master out on the previous project file. I hope you're following that. If not, just comment below and I'll break it down for you further. Okay? So again, what we're doing is we're routing all the channels to the new bus. We're routing the bus. Okay? Here's the bus. Now the bus is routed to the master. It's just going straight to the master. No, no pit stops. <laughs> no effects being added. Nothing like that. It's going straight to the master. Okay? And then we're going to adjust the bus percentage, and you guys have been watching my channel, you know you're going to do that. Not right here. Where are we going to do that? Uh, we're going to do that over here. Okay. So we're going to dial this little... Because the point, again, we're trying to create headroom in this window right here. Okay, so let's do the... We'll take a, a drastic example. So let's go back to our bus. Here's our bus. Our bus is being routed to the master this little dial right here and again if you look on the top left you'll see it should be going right at a hundred percent or so but we can adjust this let's do something extreme let's peel it back so now I've got it peeled back to about 25 percent and you can see well, here's the headroom right now we have room to add croutons okay now I know going into this that I'm not gonna need 75 percent croutons in my soup Right, I've already got the soup. We're adding some guitar parts from Jerry right now. So I'm going to say that we're going to route this this bus. We're going to route the bus about 95%. Okay? So that's the previously existing mix. I haven't had to touch any of my sliders. I haven't had to adjust any of my panning. I haven't had to rebalance anything. I'm just making room for the guitars. Okay? Now I've got my guitars... In this case, do I have them loaded in? I probably didn't label them. Shame on me. They're on uh, 16 and 17. Okay, here they are. I should go ahead and label these right now. Let's call this G1. Give it a color so we can see what's going on. And call this one G2. And let's give it a slightly different color. So we still can see what's going on. Okay, so here's my guitars. So again, let's check the note card. What are we doing with whatever we've added? The added channels are going to go directly to the master. Okay? So here's my croutons for my suit. This is G1. G1 is not going over here to the bus. And actually, he's not going to an effects bus in this case either. He's just going straight to the master. Okay? And so is G2, and G2 is going straight to the master. They're both going to the master at 100%. Okay, because if I'm adjusting their level, I'm just going to adjust them on the slider. So, so we're just going right there. And then we made room for those guys by bringing the bus. Right, we adjusted our bus right here at the bottom of our master. We adjusted our bus to about 95%. Something like that. 95, right? And then here... As long as these guys aren't peaking, right? As long as these guys aren't peaking, as long as they're not going way up here, my levels, I should be golden. So I should be, I should now overall, and I know this because I just did this before I caught this. Did, I didn't do this, like, anyhow, I did this earlier, um, earlier this afternoon, and I thought, oh, let me make a video about this. So now, as you can see, my final mix is, it's actually coming in a little bit low right now. Did I peel that? bus back too far maybe let's go check that bus 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 what did I do with you uh, it's okay so it's okay yeah it's good so here it's still peaking right around where I want it to peak and then this little extra difference where I work on you know the loudness and stuff like that that's gonna come out in the mastering all right so I hope all that guys I hope that made sense to you guys let's review that again um, just for my own, just to kind of help myself remember what I just did and what I'm trying to teach you guys. All right, so what we did was, the problem was we needed to create more headroom because we had a finished mix. We had a nice f big bowl of musical soup, and then we decided we want to add some croutons, so we've got to make room in the bowl of soup. So what we did was basically we took this bowl of soup, essentially, and put it into a different container. That's the bus. Right, and then we said, "All right, let's pour 95% of that 
from the other container back into the bowl. That's actually this new project file. This this analogy is getting a little bit sloppy now, but anyhow, you route the route the bus to the master, adjust the bus percentage to create the headroom, route the added channels directly to the master. All right, guys, again, thanks for checking it out. I do hope it makes sense, and I really appreciate everyone who's been streaming on Spotify. It's been awesome to see the activity. All right, I'll talk to you later. Bye. Jay Williams, jwilliamsproductions.com. Bye-bye. Uh, stop.